Hello everybody, my name is Dr. P and I am an oral maxillofacial surgery resident in my third year of six. And today I wanna answer a question that I got asked twice this week by my med school colleagues. And that question is, how competitive is OMFS? So we'll talk about that in just a second, as well as a few tips that I have for dental students in regards to choosing some programs to apply to. All right, guys, let's get started. So these are the statistics that I got off of the match results um, posted at natmatch.com. Um, and this is for the current cycle that just happened in 2023 to 2024. And you can see that there were a total of 110 oral surgery programs participating in the match with 243 positions offered. There were a total of 408 applicants and 231 of those matched. So the match rate, you can calculate it and it's 57%. And what's even more alarming is that almost half, they are not fourth year graduating dental students. So they are dentists that have already graduated and are either in general dentistry or in an internship or a GPR or AGD of some sorts, which I think is crazy. Um, the average rank submitted for oral surgery was 7.6, and this is for both uh, uh, four and six year programs. So for comparison, this is a graphic representation that I found um, online of the match a year ago, um, since the 2023 match has not happened yet as of filming this video, it will happen next month. So if we look at the match statistics from 2022, you can see that all the medical specialties are listed on the bottom and we have the MD students represented in blue, the DO students in red, international students in yellow. So looking at the MD students first, you can see that their lowest match rate was into plastic surgery and that was 62.7%, which is still higher than the 57% for oral surgery. Um, and then if you look at the DO students, they did have a few specialties, namely vascular surgery, neurosurgery, dermatology, and orthopedics, which they had lower match rates than oral surgery. But if you look at the specialties of ENT and plastic surgery, which are arguably the closest specialties to oral maxillofacial surgery, and you look at the average match rates for those specialties of the two groups combined, and you will see that they are much higher than for oral and maxillofacial surgery. So this is the latest dental applicant survey report that I could find. Unfortunately, it's 2017, so it's about six years old now. Um, basically, 165 participants that had matched participated in this uh, survey, and this included both oral surgery applicants as well as all the other um, dental residencies. And you can see that the average number of applications submitted was reported as about 25, uh, the average interviews was about eight, and the average number of rankings was about six. And then, again, this includes other specialties besides just oral surgery. Um, and an interesting thing that they pointed out was that submitting more than nine applications did not appear to significantly increase chances of being matched. Um, in my experience, so this was three years ago, I ended up applying to 16 programs. I received 12 interviews and I ended up ranking nine of the programs. My biggest piece of advice is do not apply anywhere that you do not want to attend. There were definitely a few programs that I applied to because I knew they were good programs, but I also did not want to necessarily um, move to that location to do my training in. And then once I got an interview there, I ended up going there and that just confirmed my previous impressions and I didn't even end up breaking them. And then lastly, I just wanted to look at this chart right here. And this is again from that same 2017 report. And this talks about the amount of um, applications received per program. And it just compares oral surgery to the other um, dental specialties and you can see that there's over 100 applications for each program um, which is just below orthodontics. So moving on to some tips I have for choosing programs to apply to if you are applying to oral surgery. Um, 
first thing is location does matter. Um, the first thing that I considered is can I afford to go to this place? Um, I thought about cost of living, how much of a stipend I would get, the cost of medical school if you are going to a six-year program. I only applied to six-year programs, um, your dental school debt, and then if moonlighting was or wasn't allowed. Also look at the population base because that will tell you what kind of surgical experiences you are going to get. Um, consider safety, your ability to travel. Um, and then obviously keep in mind that your choices of where you apply can be potential red flags for outlier programs. And what I mean by that is, at least in my program and a couple of other programs that I had talked to previously, um, a red flag would be like if you only apply to East Coast schools and then you apply to like one Southern school or one West Coast school. Like that is a red flag for that one outlier school. Um, and so you really want to keep that in mind. And then what about externships? So remember that an externship does not guarantee an interview. Um, and that was very important to note. I definitely externed somewhere and did not get an interview there. Luckily, it wasn't a place that I was dying to go to either. Um, but definitely keep that in mind and don't be don't feel bad if you don't get an interview because it happens all the time. Um, I would also say don't apply if you didn't like your experience at an externship because as an extern, I think people in general treat you really well and they make sure that you see the best cases that they have going on that week and they make sure you have the best experience that you possibly can at the program. So if you walk away and you think like, well, maybe it was just a bad week or um, maybe it gets better as a resident or I just didn't like it, but... I think it'll be okay if I end up mashing here. Like that's probably a sign that you shouldn't apply there. Some good sources of information regarding different programs would be one, your oral surgery faculty. I would definitely recommend that you go over your list of residencies with each faculty member if at all possible. One thing that you'll learn about oral surgery is that it is such a tight knit community and people know each other they know about different programs and they can provide a valuable source of information. I would also talk to um, some alumni from your dental school that went on to oral surgery. They can obviously tell you about their own program, but they can also tell you about places they, they have externed or interviewed at, places that their friends are at, um, and information about various different uh, programs in that regard. Um, I would also look at the ADA Pass website about each program um, when you apply. Sometimes they listed some information on there that I didn't see on the website as far as requirements go, um, secondary applications of sorts, things like that, so that you don't miss out on that. Um, I would also look at the program website, obviously, right? Um, but also the medical school website and make sure that the admission requirements for the medical school get waived for that oral surgery program if you do not meet them. So for example, one program I was interested in, their medical school needed a history class um, in order to be accepted. And I remember I never took history in undergrad. And I remember um, reaching out to that program and asking if that would be an issue. And it turned out that yes, indeed, it was an issue. If I wanted to apply to that oral surgery program and I ended up matching there, I somehow had to take an undergraduate history class in order to come to that program. So obviously, I did not apply. And then lastly, something to keep in mind when you research the programs. Um, so the first thing is the number of positions. So obviously, the more residents they take, the better your chances are at matching at that program, the better your call schedule is going to be. But it also means that possibly you're going to have more hospitals to cover. Uh, maybe it's just a bigger program because they are in multiple settings, right? Um, Non-categorical interns, I think, are really great to have and a big asset for any program that has them. Um, and it also makes your uh, call schedule a lot easier um, and gives you just some more people in the program, friendly faces. Obviously, consider the cost of medical school. Also, keep in mind if they pay you a stipend during medical school because that helps a lot as well. Um, obviously, the website information, we talked about that. Um, SDN. I think it can be helpful and hurtful at the same time. There is a page on there that gives the opportunity for residents to um, comment about their program and describe their program. And obviously the stuff that has been posted fairly recently is good information, but I know there's information on there that I had acquired about programs that was no longer accurate. Um, so just be careful. Obviously look at the date and see whether or not it may or may not be applicable and ask about that on your interviews if you do end up applying. 
And potential red flags in a program would be if they're missing a program director or a department chair. I think if they're missing a resident, that's a little bit obvious and concerning. Um, a lack of diversity in residents is also problematic. And I would also see whether or not the program is responsive to your inquiries, such as any emails or phone calls that you um, make because they should be interested in recruiting great future residents. And if you cannot get a response from a residency program, I think that is absolutely a red flag. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for um, watching my video. If you have any other ideas or questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.